Hey guys, Sean here. You know, I think we are slowly reaching a tipping point where getting prepared is no longer optional. You know, every year since 2020, we seem to be getting hit by crisis after crisis. And I think many people aren't financially ready for how bad the situation can really get. You know, I've been getting comments on this channel and in real life about why precious metals and silver in particular won't help you when ass hits the fan. It's the usual arguments of how you can't eat silver and it's much better to stock up on food, water, supplies and how being self-sustainable is the way to go. I don't really disagree with it but I have to be real here guys. Not everyone can be a prepper especially if you're living in a big city. Maybe you don't have the survival skills, the money to build a bug out house or own farmland to live off the grid. And the truth is there's always a limit to how much we can stockpile and we have to live our lives right. We cannot be running from the idea of an apocalypse going to happen tomorrow, we cannot walk around in total fear and it's really going to be difficult to stock up food and supplies for 5 years, hell it's going to be a pain to do it for just 1 year. You know even during times of crisis there will be commerce going on and people will still trade with each other for the things that they want and this is where silver comes in. You know silver gives you the ability to weather the storm and easily buy the core necessities you need. Take this silver eagle beautiful coin that I got years back and if things get really hairy, the stored value in this silver eagle here can be swapped out for the food I need to survive. So in this video, I really want to talk about the importance of silver especially in today's digital economy where everything seems very disconnected from the real world. I believe that silver is what's going to help us get back on our feet if all hell breaks loose. Let's dive in. You know I believe for most of us the lessons of history has been lost. Germany's hyperinflation has long been forgotten, the horrible inflation in Venezuela seems so isolated and can't really be compared to the developed world like the United States right? But I bet one of the main reasons you are viewing this video is because you know something is very wrong with our economy. The official inflation rate is 7.5%. That's what they publish online, right? But it kind of feels like it's double debt when we head out and try to buy the things that we need. Gas is getting more expensive, saving up for a down payment on a home is getting harder, and it just seems like the goalpost keeps moving, right? And unless you store your money in something that can't be printed like the silver over here, it might get really rough if a currency crisis really hits. Now, don't get me wrong guys, I do hold some cash on hand and I really believe that it's important to do so, right? You need some dollars to immediately get the things you need. But how many stacks of cash can you hold without your purchasing power slowly evaporating into thin air? You know, I think we are truly living in an age of inflation. And with the way things are going, with the Fed unable to raise interest rates high enough to tame inflation down, I really don't think prices will be stabilizing anytime soon. And that is why you see this stack of silver over here, the shiny stack, because there is value in this silver metal over here. It has held purchasing power for hundreds and thousands of years and I personally keep a variety of silver 1 ounce coins, uh, some of the bigger kilo bars and up to 100 ounce bars, right? Some people might label it as a little excessive or maybe that Sean has finally lost his mind, right? Well, maybe I have but I'd rather be prepared than be caught off guard. Now a lot of you might be holding gold instead of silver and I actually prefer gold as well. I think it's a great inflation hedge and it's awesome for those big purchases, right? You know the fact that gold recently smashed to $1900 really shows that inflation is becoming a problem that we can't ignore anymore. Many people not in precious metals don't understand that gold doesn't just magically revalue itself to $1900. It's real human beings bidding the price up, right? They are willing to exchange their dollars for gold at that price and essentially they are just saying that they value gold more than dollars. But at $1,900 per ounce for gold, it's really starting to get expensive, really, really expensive. And I can understand the hesitation to buy it. In fact, gold is so expensive today that one ounce of gold is equivalent to 80 silver ounces. Let that sink in a bit, right? Just, just look at these coins, you know, I've never seen coins that look so beautiful before. But anyways, silver is much more affordable at just $24 an ounce and everyone can really get started with just 5 to 10 ounces like now. 
if they want to, right? It's not an impossible amount to start saving for. Silver is really the sweet spot of building an emergency fund when S really hits the fan. This means more people can immediately get into the precious metals game and start saving money to something tangible, right? True private wealth that can't be debased. So you see this silver eagle here was minted in 2007 and you could buy back then for around 12 or $13, somewhere around there. But if you want to buy the same silver eagle, you know, the 2022 version today, with premiums, you'll be paying easily $30 or more, right? 30 bucks or more very easily. And it's not because the price of silver really skyrocketed up, you know, silver didn't suddenly rise up dramatically, but it's more like the value of the dollar has fallen. And this is the difference that we really have to understand. I think more importantly, we are beginning to see currencies all over the world starting to fail. And just recently, Turkey is trying to buy their citizens' gold to stabilize their failing currency, the lira. And I think that is really groundbreaking, you know, something that we should pay attention to. The lira essentially is a fiat currency and it's just a promise to pay, right? And this promise is dying at a 36% inflation rate. And I believe this move towards gold shows the Turkish government essentially admitting defeat and recognizing precious metals, gold and silver as a true store of value and literally money itself. And the scary thing is that no country is 100% safe. Let's keep it real. Things can really spiral out of control when we least expect it. You want to be holding physical silver and I think it's really important especially to stack it for survival, right? If you're an opportunist looking to grab deals when a crisis comes and hard money really shines, then I think gold might be the better pick. Silver is better for barterability for the essentials to live day by day. You know, there was a time when coinage was made in silver and the US dollar was actually called a silver certificate before 1964. You could actually exchange the certificates before 1968 for real silver and to me, that sets quite a bit of a solid precedence that silver is real money and that we have just forgotten that it is, right? And that's why I have accumulated a fair amount of silver as my emergency stack, right? Not just because of its industrial usefulness, we all know that, but also because of its intrinsic monetary value as well. I bought most of my silver between 2013 and 2019 at around 15, 16, or around $17 an ounce. And today it's sitting comfortably at 24 bucks. You know, the future is really uncertain and I know my stack will give me options and a peace of mind if things go south, right? It's really to carry well from the death of one currency to the birth of the next currency. Now you might be wondering if people will actually exchange their goods and products for your silver. We just need to look back in the early 2000s in Argentina when inflation was running at around 25%. That's very high. And people actually bartered with each other and one of the main tools they used for their transactions was silver, right? There has to be a medium of exchange that people can rely on to barter back and forth with. And that's where silver shines, right? That means either people will give you the goods that you wanted, maybe eggs, meat or bread for your silver, or you simply just exchange your silver for a big pile of cash and just go buy the stuff with the inflated dollars on the day itself. You know, we can also look most recently at Venezuela's currency crisis in 2018 and it kind of got so bad that people were actually breaking off flakes of gold, actual physical gold to buy lunch and haircuts. You know, that's really how insane it became. Now, a lot of people say that the solution when things go south is to run to Bitcoin and cryptos, but is that really the answer? You know, the big issue with cryptos is that it is still within the financial system and it's not truly decentralized, right? You know, unless a significant amount of companies and stores, supermarkets start accepting cryptos, you still need to go to an exchange to cash out your coins for cash. There are still choke points where many bad actors can strike from, you know, North Korean hackers to the exchanges themselves running away with your money. And there is the biggest factor that doesn't give me long-term confidence in cryptos and it's that cryptos by nature are highly trackable and governments can easily ban or restrict them, right? You know, China has banned Bitcoin, Canada most recently freezed many crypto wallets 
and the United States is just one step away from regulating crypto, right? And that's why crypto can never be considered digital gold or even be as secure as silver in a financial collapse, right? You can't hold it, you know, it's somewhere floating around in the ether. But with silver, as primitive as it sounds, I can hold it and therefore I own it. So let's say you're ready to start stacking silver, but you're wondering where to start. So some people say to buy junk silver, which are all American silver coins that contain 0.715 ounces of silver each. But I find that to be too complicated and junk silver is more suitable if you live in America. But what if you live somewhere else? You know, I want to keep things simple for everyone and I personally feel the best as hits the fence silver will be the standard one ounce coins, right? It's a universal denomination and everyone can deal with the one ounce coin weight. You won't go wrong with it, right? You know, there are coins like the American Silver Eagle, Silver Cougarans, and Silver Philharmonics are good options. But my all-time favorite is the Canadian Silver Maple, right? Which gives you one ounce of pure silver. It's highly recognizable and has awesome security features as well and the premium isn't too high compared to other coins like the Eagles. So sure, you can go for the bigger 1kg and 100 ounce bars over here that you see, and you will get more ounces for your dollars 100%. You can stretch your dollar further, but at that point, you are treating silver more as an investment, right? It's going to be harder to liquidate the bars or trade them when the time comes. That's why for emergency stack, it does pay to focus a little more on smaller 1 ounce coins and sure, throw in a few 10 ounce bars here and there for more variety and extra savings on the premiums, go ahead. But I think another big question you have to ask yourself is, how much silver exactly should you stack, right? How much should you accumulate over time? Now that's a very personal question, but I believe in keeping 6 months worth of expenses in silver if things really go to hell. Now the rest of my stack is for investment diversification and that's why you see bigger kilo and 100 ounce bars here. Now for this video, I really don't want you to treat silver as an investment, it's protection first, but there could be a scenario where confidence in fiat currencies are lost to the point that people all start panicking, right? And they pile into silver and yes, that could cause the price of silver to rocket up and then you could really have an investment that outperforms, right? But that shouldn't be your primary objective and how you should look at silver, right? Especially when it comes to protecting your purchasing power. Remember guys, I'm not a financial advisor, just a fellow stacker sharing his passion for gold and silver. You have to make your own decisions, but I believe today we need to get ready for anything in this crazy world and building your security or emergency stack is a good move. Just think about it, if nothing happens, silver will continue to hold value and you can just simply sell it off when you need to, right? But if the worst really happens and we do encounter an economic or currency collapse, you'd be happy to hold some silver, right? At least you will have some real money that doesn't devalue within reach. So there you have it guys. Do you have an emergency stack ready when S hits the fan? Let me know in the comments below and if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more gold and silver videos. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you soon.